As students head back to class, a new book challenges colleges to better prepare young people for life after they graduate. The Coddling of the American Mind, How Good Intentions and Bad Ideas Are Setting Up a Generation for Failure, says the book says many teens and young adults are unprepared for the real world. Authors Greg Lukianoff and Jonathan Haidt, that's Haidt, not hate, that's right. right, in the book. Many university students are learning to think in distorted ways, and this increases their likelihood of becoming fragile, anxious, and easily hurt. They join us at the table. Welcome to both of you. Thank you so much. Um, John, I want to start with you. Failure is good for learning, which I have just uh, done with the pronunciation of your name. <laughs> You'll um, never forget it. That's right. Your book is about making wise people, not just people of achievement. Mm -hmm. How has the system gotten it wrong? Um, so uh, my first book was called The Happiness Hypothesis. It was about the psychological wisdom of the ancients. The ancients understood how to thrive, how to get along with people. And so they gave us principles like what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, but we've somehow begun teaching kids that what doesn't kill them might make them weaker. We need to protect them from words and, and things like that, which is, was Greg's original insight. Uh, the second uh, great untruth is uh, always trust your feelings. And the third is life is a battle between good people and evil people. Um, we'll, I hope we'll be able to talk about here about how these bad ideas got into the educational system, into our child rearing. That's right. But, and Greg, go ahead. God, but, but let's talk about always trust your feelings. Because <laughs> aren't we raised, Greg, you know, follow your heart, pay attention to your feel, feelings, keep in tune with your gut. So I'm always thinking you're supposed to trust your feelings. Sure. You say, listen, sometimes your feelings mislead you. Exactly. Uh, the, uh, the great untruth of emotional reasoning, reasoning is the one that sounds the nice it sounds the warmest yes. and fuzziest and most romantic. But I, le I learned the hard way through really terrible bouts of depression um, that sometimes your mind is telling you things that aren't so nice and that you shouldn't be listening to. Like, like? Uh, like that, well, you know, the common cognitive distortions, as they call them in CBT, are like you know, saying you're broken or if this date doesn't go well, I'm done for. Yeah. Or if this job interview fails, that I, I'll never get a job again. Catastrophizing. Catastrophizing. Mm -hmm. CBT being cognitive behavioral therapy, which, Jonathan, in the book you offer solutions about how to engage encounter the world and it requires things like cognitive behavioral therapy and mindfulness to be able to be prepare yourself for the basically frictions of life. Mm -hmm. Well that's right. So, so one of the greatest ideas from every culture is that uh, there's nothing good or bad but thinking makes it so is how Shakespeare put it. Mm -hmm. uh, our, our life is the creation of our minds is how Buddha put it. Mm -hmm. And so as students are coming into a new situation should they interpret everything as dangerous threatening and aggressive or should they interpret it as, as a cornucopia full of opportunities? And there are, going to be, there are going to be little bumps along the way. There are going to be unpleasantnesses. Should they interpret those as attacks or as faux pas or errors? And so how students learn to frame things will greatly affect whether they thrive or whether they retreat into a shell in a defensive crouch in college. I think one of the most alarming things for parents, too, is we go back to school, everybody's going off to university, is what you write about, that adolescent anxiety and depression are unlike anything seen yeah. in modern times. So how have campuses and schools changed as a result of that? And that's the scariest revelation for us, and, and doing the research for it, is that you know our argument is essentially we have anxious, depressed, and polarized students, and we're wondering how we got there. And our point is that we're teaching them the mental habits of anxious, depressed, and polarized people. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Lisa Damore, who's a psychologist here that's on our show frequently, is writing a book about this, too. Mm -hmm. Sometimes anxiety and stress are good things. Sure. They are natural protectants. Why have we labeled them as such negative feelings that then become all-encompassing? Mm -hmm. uh, well, good intentions. I mean, the subtitle of our book is How Good Intentions and Bad Ideas Are Setting Up a Generation for yeah, Failure. Right. We all want to protect our kids. And as societies have fewer and fewer children, and as the, as the safety of those children goes up and up and up, we find smaller and, and smaller things to worry what, about. One of my favorite lines <laughs> is, prepare the children for the road, not the yep. road for the yeah. child. Yep. That's right. Yeah. Greg, ah, Greg that's let me ask good. you. You write about the call-out culture yeah. and the heckler's veto. We've yeah. seen recently the New Yorker invited Steve Bannon to come speak yep. to the New Yorker ideas. Uh, the Economist did the same thing. The New Yorker disinvited Bannon. Right. The Economist said, you got to meet people who disagree with you in order to learn, which seems in keeping with your book. How do you sort those two choices? Well, it definitely, you know, our context is campus, and campuses are completely different institutions than, than, than magazines. And when, a, and when a campus makes a decision that you're no longer invited to this campus because we don't like your ideas, that's antithetical to the whole idea of what a university is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. 
Well, you also yeah. have an interesting anecdote, too, about peanut butter, which oh, is a yeah. good kind uh, of thing. But we, I know. I'm going to just lay that out there as a tease because we are out of time, but a good reason to buy the book. You protect your kids from peanuts, they're more likely to have peanut allergies. <laughs> you, say, you say, parents, let your kids have a couple of bumps. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Yep. Absolutely. Well, Greg Lukianoff and Jonathan Haidt, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having us. Raise a lot of good questions in this. The Coddling of the American Mind is on sale now.